Hey Joe from Home Studio Corner. Today I want to talk about ribbon microphones, specifically this ribbon microphone, which is the Cascade Fathead ribbon, and why it's awesome on some things and awful on others. Let's jump in. Look, it has a dent. Can you see it right there? Now, if you're just starting out and you need a single microphone for your studio, this is not it. I would recommend something like a large diaphragm condenser of some sort, or maybe even a dynamic like an SM57. However, a ribbon microphone makes a great second or third mic to add to your collection. So today I want to give you some examples of where this thing shines and some examples of where it sucks. Real quickly, let's talk about what makes a ribbon a ribbon. Inside of this, if I could break this apart, you would see a rectangle and inside that rectangle within kind of a frame is this sort of corrugated piece of metal. That's the ribbon. That's the thing that is conducting sound or electricity converting sound to electricity. In a dynamic microphone, that's usually some sort of magnet with wires wrapped around it. In a condenser, it's some metal disc that is charged from phantom power, and that is what allows it to pick up sound. I don't completely understand the electronics, and you don't need to completely understand the electronics to use them. Sonic-wise, how does a ribbon mic compare to, say, a condenser microphone? They're kind of on opposite ends of the spectrum with a dynamic mic being in the middle. So it's kind of like this. Ribbon microphones are on the darker end of the spectrum. Dynamic mics are kind of in the middle. And then condenser mics tend to be brighter and more accurate mics. The obvious question, if a condenser is more accurate, why would you want something that's a lot darker sounding? Well, I'll tell you. I'm a big fan of getting it right at the source. If the source is overly bright, like a really bright guitar amp or certain types of percussion, and I always find myself EQing them later to make them less bright and harsh, why not capture them with something that will go ahead and remove some of those high frequencies so the captured sound itself sounds closer to what I want it to sound like in the mix? That's where a ribbon comes in. At this point, when I'm using a guitar amp, I can't think of a time in the last few years that I haven't used this microphone exclusively on guitar cabinets. It's just great. One of the typical problems with recording, let's say, rock guitars, if you've got a little bit of grit to it, if you go too far in one direction, it's boomy and beefy. If you go too far in the other direction, it's bright and shrill and ice pick and it really hurts. There's got to be a nice middle ground. I have found I can find the middle ground with this mic better than anything I've tried. So I will literally just slap this in the middle of the amp, right in the center. If the speaker's like this, I will put it right in the center of the cone, where it's historically, it's way too bright for any other microphone, but this one absorbs it wonderfully and gives me, essentially, what I'm hearing in the room is what gets captured on the recording. Let me play something for you. One of the most common mistakes I see when people are doing rock guitars, they tend to have just either too much gain on the guitars or the recording of the guitars has too much upper mid-range. That Those frequencies are exciting, but too much of them starts to add up and really just sounds bright and tinny and kind of like white noise, especially when you start adding doubled guitars or tripled or quadrupled, when you start adding a bunch of guitars together, it's like that white noise frequency just gets louder and louder and becomes almost unmanageable. Then you have to use a lot of EQ to get everything to sit together. Why not use a darker microphone that doesn't pick up quite as much of those upper mid-range frequencies and allows you to have a nice, full, still bright, but warm sounding tone that doesn't chop your head off. Whether I'm recording one track or 10 guitar tracks, that microphone plays well in both scenarios. Okay, so we've heard it on electric guitar, sounds pretty good. Should sound good on acoustic guitar, right? Let's find out. It 
See what I mean? Way too dark and boomy on acoustic. It essentially brings out all the bad stuff about acoustic guitar that we spend so much time trying to get rid of in the mix. So ribbon on acoustic, not great. But on electric, it worked well. It took away a lot of that piercing top end that can be there, and there's still plenty of low end. You may have even thought to yourself, there's too much low end in that electric guitar. I'm okay with that, because a high pass filter will work wonders. It's not necessarily boomy, there's just a lot of beef there to work with, versus something that doesn't pick up any low end, but has a crap ton of high mids that becomes in some ways unusable. Okay, what about vocals? We've seen the big picture of Frank Sinatra and a giant ribbon microphone. Surely they're great for vocals, right? Well, let's see. Singing vocals into a ribbon mic. Hope it sounds good, just like I like it. <laughs> okay, so it, not, not as terrible as maybe you might think, but it's still very, very dark, very missing everything above you know, 3K or so. So even going in with EQ later and boosting, it's not the ideal thing. It doesn't sound like a vocal track. And I wasn't very close. I don't know if you could tell. I was probably a good eight inches away. I wasn't right up on the microphone and you heard how much boominess was there. That's partially due to the fact that this is a figure eight pattern. So all ribbons, just by the nature of how they work, pick up in the front and the back. I don't use that for any craziness like mid side or bloom line. It's just interesting to know. But when when they are directional like that, they tend to have a little more proximity effect, which combine that with having less top end makes sense why they're pretty dark microphones. Okay, so I've shown you one thing, electric guitar, that I think this is fantastic for. Two things, vocals and acoustic, that it's not great for. What's another thing that it does work well on? Percussion, especially shakers and tambourine. I found if I record it with a condenser or even a dynamic, there tends to be just way a whole lot of top end that I either have to turn it way down in the mix or use some sort of EQ low pass filter to get rid of some of those excessive top end frequencies. Not so much with the ribbon. Take a listen. When I use ribbons on any kind of percussion, even on a drum kit from a distance, kind of as just an overall capture the sound of the kit mic, it works wonders because it kind of ignores the annoying high end frequencies and catches a lot of that mid range and low end that I tend to want to capture. When I, when I do things like shakers and tambourines with the ribbon, I just drop them in the mix and I usually don't have to do anything, they just sit nicely. Some people say ribbon microphones hear much like our ears do. A condenser microphone tends to be a little exaggerated, especially in the upper frequencies. I would say a ribbon, at least this ribbon, the Cascade Fathead, tends to be a little exaggerated in the low end and then more natural maybe in the upper frequencies, if not a little rolled off up there. So there you go, I'm not gonna say go out and buy one today, but if you're in the market for a second or third microphone, instead of getting something that sounds really similar to what you already have, you might get more mileage out of getting something that's very different, that gives you a completely different color, and you can use it in a lot more creative ways. Whether you get a ribbon microphone or not, you do need to make sure you get my recording cheat sheet at recordingcheatsheet.com. Just go to that website, enter your email address, and I will send it to you for free. It's got a lot of good stuff packed into just a few pages about how to get the most out of your recordings, which, by the way, will make your mixes better, which, by the way, will make your masters better, which, by the way, will bring you lots of joy. So go check it out now, and I'll see you in the next one.